worship you, Almighty God. There is none like you. I worship you, O Prince of Peace. That is what I want to do. I give you praise. Welcome to Macedonia United Methodist Church. My name is Kevin Johnson. I serve as the pastor here. It is a joy to welcome you to worship on this day. I invite you to join me right now in our call to worship. Your word is a lamp to my feet, Lord. Your word is a light to my path. Though the world around me tosses and tumbles, I hold fast to you. Though I have doubts and worries and I wonder, I hold fast to you. Though my heart hurts, my spirit aches, and I lose my way. I hold fast to you. Though I encounter wickedness and hate seemingly around every corner. I hold fast to you. Your stories and your songs, O oh Lord. They comfort me. Your will and your way, O oh Lord. They nudge me along. Your presence and your promise, O oh Lord. They give me hope. Your world is my heritage and my heart. And I will turn toward you forever. I will hold fast to you. And I will sing praises to your name. Let us sing together how firm a foundation. Oh 
invite you to join me at this time in the prayer of confession that is found in your bulletin. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. At this time, I invite you to share the peace of Christ with someone in your life, whether that means you pick up your phone and write someone a text message, or you pause this video for a minute uh, to pick it up and call someone, or, or you just reach out to someone that is in the room with you watching. But I invite you to share Christ's peace with someone. The Lord is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. This is the Sea of Galilee. So many important and wonderful things happen at the sea that we need a small piece of it to help us tell the stories. Now the sea is a wonderful and strange place. When the wind blows, the sea is wild and rough. When the wind is calm, the sea is peaceful and still. After God raised Jesus from the dead, the disciples returned to Galilee just as Jesus said that he would meet him there. One night, seven of the disciples decided to go fishing. They fished all night long. And they didn't catch anything. Just before dawn, they saw someone on the seashore. It's too far away and they couldn't see who it was, but the person yelled to them, 
Have you caught any fish? They answered, No. Throw your net to the right side of the boat, and there you will find some. So the disciples did that. They tossed the net. And there were so many fish that they couldn't pull the net in. Then someone said, it's Jesus. And so Peter jumped into the water and ran to Jesus. The other disciples stayed in the boat and dragged the net in. As they came to shore, they saw a charcoal fire with fish and bread on it. Jesus told them to come and eat. Then the rest of the disciples realized that it was Jesus. Jesus passed around the bread and also the fish. I wonder how the disciples felt when Jesus didn't seem to be around them anymore. I wonder why they decided to go fishing. I wonder what they were talking about as they were fishing. I wonder how they feel when they've been fishing all night long and didn't catch anything. I wonder how the person on the beach knew which side of the boat to throw the net onto. I wonder how the disciples knew that the person on the beach was Jesus. I wonder what Jesus and the disciples are saying to one another. I wonder what the disciples will do now that they have talked to Jesus again. And if you can join with me in a prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you that you raised Jesus from the dead. Thank you that he takes care of us. He helps the disciples to find fish when they couldn't find any. That he is there to listen to us when we're afraid. And Lord, thank you for the love that you've shown us in so many things. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I invite you to join me in our Psalter reading from Psalm 119. Your word is a lamp before my feet and a light for my journey. I have sworn and I fully mean it. I will keep your righteous rules. I have been suffering so much. Lord, make me live again according to your promise. Please, Lord, accept my spontaneous gifts of praise. Teach me your rules. Though my life is constantly in danger, 
I won't forget your instruction. Though the wicked have set a trap for me, I won't stray from your precepts. Your laws are my possession forever, because they are my heart's joy. I have decided to keep your statutes forever, every last one of them. I invite you to join me as we sing together, Holy Spirit, Truth Divine. gospel lesson today comes from the gospel of Matthew, the 13th chapter. As we continue in our series, Jesus says this week, we hear Jesus say, hear and understand. I want you to hear these words with me. That day Jesus went out of the house and sat down beside the lake. Such large crowds gathered around him that he climbed into a boat and sat down. The whole crowd was standing on the shore. He said many things to them in parables. A farmer went out to scatter seed. As he was scattering seed, some fell on the path and birds came and ate it. Other seed fell on rocky ground where the soil was shallow. They sprouted immediately because the soil wasn't deep. But when the sun came up, it scorched the plants and they dried up because they had no roots. Other seed fell among thorny plants. The thorny plants grew and choked them. Other seed fell on good soil and bore fruit. In one case, a yield of 100 to 1. In one case, a yield of 60 to 1. In another case, a yield of 30 to 1. Everyone who has ears should pay attention. Consider then the parable of the farmer. Whenever people hear the word about the kingdom and don't understand it, the evil one comes and carries off what was planted in their hearts. This is the seed that was sown in the path. As for the seed that was spread on rocky ground, this refers to people who hear the word and immediately receive it joyfully. Because they have no roots, they last only a little while. When they experience distress or abuse because of the word, they immediately fall away. As for the seed that was spread among thorny plants, this refers to those who hear the word, but the worries of this life and the false appeal of wealth choke the word and it bears no fruit. As for what was planted on good soil, This refers to those who hear and understand and bear fruit and produce. In one case, a yield of 100 to 1, in one case, a yield of 60 to 1, and in another case, a yield of 30 to 1. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Lord, let the words of my mouth and the thoughts and meditations of all of our hearts be pleasing in your sight. For you, O Lord, are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. I will never forget our science lesson in Mrs. Kennedy's kindergarten class. We got to pick out the type of seed we wanted to plant. And then we planted them in class in our styrofoam 
cups. The teacher sent home directions, I'm sure, to care for our plants. I'm also sure that most parents forgot about the experiment within the week. I, however, was going to grow a watermelon plant, and I would not be deterred. We set out the styrofoam cup on the windowsill in the kitchen, an area with plenty of light. We would water it daily for those first few weeks. And then we went to plant my watermelon sprout at Grandpa's house. Grandpa had a huge backyard with a large garden. So we planted my watermelon together, and I waited for it to grow. Our parable today is most often called the parable of the sower, And that is a true title for it. We learn about this sower who consistently throws the same seed all over the place. By modern farming standards, this sower seems wasteful. I mean, even I, a very amateur gardener, know the value of tilling the soil and only planting where the plants have a good shot at growing. But God, the farmer, throws out the seed all over the place. And it is as if God naively thinks that this could all potentially become good soil. Another vantage point, however, to look at this story is through the lens of the soil. It could be called the parable of the soils. After all, we are sitting here wondering what to do with this parable, with this story. We cannot help but ask ourselves, which type of soil am I? The soil along the path? The shallow soil? The thorny soil? Maybe the the good soil? Well, let's consider the three lesser soils first. The soil along the path seems like the impossible soil to grow anything successfully. Birds will come along and eat up the seed even before it has a chance to be planted and there is nothing for the seed to sink into and begin to grow. The shallow soil then, Jesus tells us, produces a sprout that seems quite hopeful It grows rapidly at first, but then it stops halfway and never produces a thing. One of my professors in college said this statement that I didn't understand at 20, but I understand a lot more at 35. He said, I would rather have a good pastor for 40 years than a great pastor for five years. And I hear that. The reality of burnout doesn't just exist for pastors. You have friends that have been that shallow soil. Their faith seemed aflame, but then it flamed out all too quickly. Jesus explains that this is often due to persecution. And in the time following Jesus, this had to be true. Perhaps shallow soil faith is about something that happens to a person that shakes their faith so hard that they cannot find a way forward in life while holding on to faith. Parents divorce or a loved one dies, or the world is so awful, or a spiritual leader turns out to be a fraud, and faith is gone in their shallow soil. And as much as we might have stories about shallow soil, I think where we really live in the church in America today is the thorny soil. Everything seems like it is going fine, the plant is growing, but then the worries of this life and the false appeal of wealth choke the plant. The rich young ruler who asks Jesus what he must do to enter the kingdom of God ends up walking away sad because he could not let go of his wealth. The worries of this life can become seemingly insurmountable in our culture. We cannot pay attention in prayer for five minutes, but we have no problem getting consumed by clickbait stories on social media. And if we don't work to get the weeds out of the garden, our faith plant surely gets choked. The weeds first come inconspicuously in my garden at home. They blend in with whatever plant they are trying to suck life away from. The ones in the midst of the gardenias sure look similar to the green leaves of the gardenias. The viney plants that grow around the tomatoes sure have the character of tomato plants. And without fail, a couple of months into our annual garden, when we're away from home for a week, and then we get back and it's busy and too hot to work it, the weeds start to take over. And without urgent attention, 
those weeds and thorns surely take out the potential fruit. So then, we are left with the unlikely hope. Could I be the good soil? And I think we all come to the parable recognizing ourselves in one of the other three soils. So we say, well, I want to be good soil. Give me a list, preacher, of the seven things I must do to become good soil. I know that's what you woke up thinking this morning. Oh, have I been there. This is my great spiritual weakness. I am what teenagers today call a try-hard. In order to make something better or to get where I want to go, if I just try hard enough, I'll get there, I think. And this concept usually works when studying for a test or pursuing a short-term project. But try-hard spirituality? That's a different story. For Jesus doesn't give us the answer about how to become good soil. He doesn't give us the seven steps or the recipe to make our pH levels balance out to be good conduits of the kingdom seed. What does he say about the good soil? This refers to those who hear and understand. Hear and understand seems easy enough. So all I have to do is work hard to hear and understand, to just believe it? Not exactly. If you've ever found yourself talking to a child while they are watching television, or to a grown-up who is intent on the phone in front of them, they may hear what you say. They might be able to repeat it back to you. But to understand, that implies that there is an urgency to act. I can hear a fire alarm going off. But to hear and understand means that I get off my butt and out of the building. How many times do we hear the word of God and not do what it says? Is the issue that we don't really want to understand. We hear the kingdom call of God but understanding means that we have to do it. Good soil, above all things, is receptive. So the question for us is, are we receptive to God's work in our lives? To hear and understand the word and thus bear fruit means that we are open and even vulnerable to God. And this is scary because we like control. But the soil does not control the outcome of the yield in this story. Right now, four months into this pandemic, I want something to control. So when I read this story, I want to be the best darn soil that I can be. I'll be the soil with 100-fold growth, God. But we don't control the outcome. In 1 Corinthians, Paul is addressing a different issue but uses a similar metaphor when he says, I planted, Apollos watered, but God made it grow. God gives the growth, not the soil. The soil is the receiver for the kingdom growth to happen. But the soil doesn't get to control the growth. Jesus is asking are you open to me? Can you receive the kingdom? Can you let your guard down? During that summer when I was six, an incredible thing happened. The plant actually grew. I'm sure my parents gave me the caveat as we planted it that sometimes plants don't grow like we expect so that I wouldn't be disappointed when the project failed. We went out to Grandpa's house one afternoon because he had reported to us about some incredible growth of my plant. 
as we walked up on that hot August day to see my watermelon plant's growth, there stood a six-foot-tall sunflower. It was remarkable. I had planted this tiny seed, thought it was a watermelon, and instead a sunflower had grown that was twice my height. God gives surprising, miraculous growth that we don't have control over. But if we are receptive, sunflowers might shoot up. Maybe a whole field of them. Thanks be to God. Amen. I am the vine, you are the branches. Remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Stay. I invite you to join me as we respond with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father, the Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven, is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. I am the vine, you are the branches. Let us pray together for the church and for our world. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as Christ loves us. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer.
Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles. And bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled, and we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We offer these prayers through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. A few things to share with you um, that are going on in the life of our church right now. One is that you received an email uh, on Friday about sharing prayer concerns via email um, on a form. And we're going to be sending out a weekly prayer email. So if you'd like to receive that email, you're welcome to, um, to make sure that you fill that out. But also, this, this one we sent out Friday is so that you can put any prayer concerns that you might have. And you have the opportunity to enter uh, those in so they go out in that weekly email and we can share with one another uh, and, and pray with one another, especially during this time um, where we don't have our prayers in this exact same fashion that we might have as we're gathered together. So I invite you um, to fill that out and, and share your prayer needs with us. Um, you will see a prayer and communion sign up coming out this week um, and, and that, that will be for a time uh, in, in the next couple weeks on a Sunday afternoon when we'll have a time where uh, a small group of folks can come at each sign-up time and come and have some time of silent prayer uh, in the sanctuary space. And then also um, I'll bless elements and people will be able to receive them on the way out. Uh, that'll be a time where everyone is wearing masks and they will sanitize in and out and we'll take some precautions between folks coming in. But we do invite you to sign up uh, for that time. Also, um, in August, I'm going to be leading a, uh, a web-based study uh, on becoming an anti-racist, a book by Ibram X. Kendi. I want to share that with you. We'll get information about the specific days and times of that study as, as, as we get closer to August. But I want to share that with you. If that's something you're interested in, I invite you to go ahead and order that book uh, in whichever way you would like to order it. And, um, and we will do a, probably a four- to five-week study of that important work together. Um, I've just finished it recently, uh, and it is a challenging and, and, and really important book for us to consider. And so I'm gonna invite you to join me in that um, during that period of time in August. Now I invite you um, to continue to give to the work of God through your tithes and offerings. As you know, you can always give by check in the mail, by sending that to the church. I really invite you at this time to consider giving online. Uh, when we give online, it makes it so that we don't have to remember. You can set it on a weekly or monthly basis um, so that it just happens and occurs uh, and, and so that you don't fall behind in your giving and things like that as we still um, continue the work of the church. And so I invite you to do that at this time as we give to God of our tithes and offerings. set me free. I'm happy to be in the truth, and I will daily lift my hands, for I will always sing of when your love came down. I could sing of your love forever. I could sing of your love love for me and I will open up my heart and let the healer set me free. I'm happy to be in the truth and I will daily lift my hands for I will always 
sing of when your love came down. I could sing of your love forever. 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 Oh, I feel like dancing. It's foolishness, I know. But when the world has seen the light, they will dance with joy like they're dancing now. I could sing of your love forever. I could sing of your love forever. I could sing of your love forever. I could sing of your love. And I invite you to sing with us our closing hymn, Sent Forth for God. you now to sing with us our song of blessing. May God give you eyes to see all that is good, all that is good. The courage for
Glory to God, who by his power at work within you is able to do abundantly far more than you could ever ask or imagine. Glory to him in the church and in Christ Jesus, both now and for all generations, forever and always. Amen.